Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode right here at 2020 Flight Simmers. If this is your first time joining us on the channel, where have you been? Go down below, hit that subscribe button, you don't want to miss any of our future videos. If you really want to help us out, hit that thumbs up button, it really sets us apart from other channels, and also lets us know we're doing a fantabulous job at what we're doing right here. Today's episode is all about the TBM 930, how to operate it, how to fly it, how to land it, and more importantly, how to program that G3000 GPS. So today's episode, we're going to have completely timestamp below. If you want to skip ahead, timestamps will all be down in the description, as some of this video might be boring to some people. If you also have a Bravo Throttle Quadrant, I highly suggest you check out my TBM Bravo Throttle Quadrant setup guide. It will make your startup procedure that much more entertaining. So, if you want to know more about the TBM 930 and the G3000 with the VNAV features, then stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Zippers. All right, guys, so now we are in the cockpit of the beautiful, majestic, and luxurious TBM 930. Ah. So, uh, the first thing that we need to do... ...to get this thing going so that we can actually enter some information is to get some power started in the TBM. So, we're going to go ahead and flip on the battery and the alternator... And then we're going to come down below and initialize our MFD. Once we've done that, we're going to step back up top. We're going to hit our strobe and pulse light on to let everybody know outside, hey, get out of the way. We're starting up this big old engine. Next thing we need to do is turn our fuel pump booster in the on position. Make sure our fuel selector is in manual mode. And then we're going to come over here to the starter and slam that up in the start position for two seconds. When we do that, you're going to notice one major thing is that big old thing on the front of the plane here is going to start turning. And as we look down to our NG, once we reach right around 20%, we're going to come down and add some fuel. Now, once we do that, we're now going to monitor our NG until it gets up to about 50% or so. And then we're going to go ahead and throw us into high idle. Now that we're in high idle, we can go ahead and put us into taxi mode and allow the engine to equalize. We'll then come back up top and put our booster pump in the auto position. Tick the autopilot trim in the up on position and go ahead and hit our fuel selector into auto mode. One of the things I forgot is to turn on some panel lights here. You can also hit the access light, which is going to be right here. Great for night flights, which we will be doing today. So as you come down here, you're going to notice a couple yellow master cautions popping up here on the MFD screen for the pedo and the stall heat. So we'll come right down here and turn those on. We will also go ahead and arm the bleed in the auto position. Now that we've got that done and we are all set up, let's get into the G3000. So we're going to talk about the G3000 suite here, and we are also using the working title G3000 mod. Links will be below. So check it out if you want to bring your TBM experience to the next level. All right, so the first menu here we're going to check out is the PFD screen. The PFD screen is everything in front of the pilot. So everything on this screen is going to control everything on this screen. So what I'd like to do at the first start is, because we're going to be flying a GPS coordinate, all we need to do is go down here to the nav source, and we're going to switch that to FMS. So that is going to follow our GPS path once we get that input into the computer. The next is I always like in, to put in nav1 in my bearing1 and nav2 in bearing2, unless I'm going to be following an NDB. So you can also change that if you just tap on that. You can switch between GPS, ADF, which would be your NDBs, or you could just turn it off completely. But again, I like to leave it in the on position just in case I need to put something in there. 
Next thing on this screen are your speed bugs. If you tick on the speed bugs, it'll bring up all your speed bugs for the aircraft. Now your rotate speed will vary depending on weight. So if you want to know what to set this to, go ahead and check out the link below that I posted for the checklist for the TBM. That will better assist you in inputting the correct air speeds here. To change that airspeed, all you need to do is left click on it and enter your airspeed, hit enter, and voila, you are done. But for the conservation of time, I'm just going to go ahead and arm my rotate speed and my VY speed. So this is going to get our best uh, climb rate. We're also going to be using this once we set up our autopilot. So just keep that in mind. After we've taken off and we are in air, I will go ahead and turn these off and arm the approach speed for our approach procedure. But for now, we're going to go ahead and leave those on. You also have a timer you can set up, so if you are doing some timings, uh, you have that available right for you. The next thing is our minimums. Now I believe our minimums at this airport are about 260 feet or so, uh, so I'm just going to enter that. Now you have a couple different options here for your minimum um, calculation of how they get your minimums. Whether you're going to be calculating that with your barometric pressure or your radios. The radio is always going to be the most accurate, and I always pick the radio. So I enter my minimums, hit enter, and one of the things you're going to notice that pop up on the screen right here is our minimums, which is right here. You're also going to notice this right here. This is our radio altitude. So it says that we are 5 feet. And we probably are because we are sitting in the plane. So the next thing on this list is our traffic map. If you hit this button right here, you're going to notice a cool little map that pops up in the PFD screen, and this is your traffic inset menu. You can adjust the range by going in or out uh, right here on the ranges on the PFD screen. Now, I hope I'm going slow enough for everybody to take in as much information as you can. Don't be afraid to stop and rewind if you need to. Uh, and again, if you have any questions while we're going through this, please post them down below in the comments. I would love to help you out and answer those questions so you can get a better understanding to get the most out of your flight simming experience in the TBM 930. So the next thing on this list, we're going to go ahead and turn that traffic map off right now. Actually, I like the traffic map, so I'm going to keep it on. You go down here to the PDF settings menu, and this is going to give you some information here to set up for this little inset. Now, my inset map, if you click on that, it is now going to change that traffic map to an inset map of the exact GPS uh, map you've got here in your MFD screen. So one of the other things that I like to set up is to make sure that I have north up orientation. Some people like using heading up, some people like tracking up. I like north up because it helps me better identify where I am in location to the area I'm flying. It's a personal preference, do what you like. The next thing you can do is adjust the map level of detail on this little PFD menu. If you go down to least, you will see a bunch of things go off of that menu and it will declutter it for you. I like it as decluttered as possible. Again, there are also some other features down here in some of these other menus. I leave all of those to default. Alright, so the next thing on the PFD menu list is the PFD settings. And these are really important because this is your angle of attack right here. That will tell you whether your aircraft is pitching up or pitching down. It's very helpful when you're coming in on an approach and you've got to slow down in speed and it kind of is a, uh, a pre-tell sign that you need to add some flaps. So I'll go ahead and show you that uh, once we come on our approach. The next is the wind. You have a couple different options here for wind. Um, they don't actually tell you what they are, but once you get up in the air and the wind data does populate, you can flip through these and check those out. I like option three. Again, it's personal preference. Now, because I fly in North America, mostly I leave my barrow set in inches. You are more than welcome to turn it into hectopascals uh, if you are anywhere else in the world. The last feature on this is you can also enable the meters only. Again, I'm not using that because I do everything in feet. So that pretty much takes care of the PFD menu from the screen, center screen here. The next thing we're going to do is go down here to the COM menu. 
So if you click on the third button down, we are going to enter the NAVCOM menu. And this menu is very important because this is where you're going to enter your squawk codes, your COM frequencies, and your NAV frequencies. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice here on this menu is you don't see any NAV frequencies here. So the G3000, there is a couple more steps to get to those NAV frequencies. So I'm going to show you a little trick once we get to our MFD menu on how to enter some NAV information for your ILS. But we're going to go down this screen here and just show you what everything does. If you need to enter your squawk code, all you need to do is left click right there. You can enter the squawk code, what ATC gives you. You can then hit enter. If you want to enter just a VFR squawk code, just hit VFR. And it'll go ahead and put the VFR squawk code in for your region. To activate the transponder, you can either tick the on button or the altitude reporting mode, depending on if you're on the ground or in the air. Once you have done that, hit that enter button. It will take you back to your main screen to where you can enter your comm frequencies. So if you wanted to enter a frequency right here, you can do so and just enter whatever frequency you want. It puts it right there, hit enter, and it's in your standby. So to go ahead and put that in your main, all you need to do is click on the comm button and it will go ahead and flip your standby up to your main frequency. And the same goes as for your COM2 radios down below. Now, if you are in the air and you need to pick up ATIS information from your rival airport in which you're heading to, this is a really cool feature because you can turn this on. And what that means is you will be listening to COM1 and COM2, but only responding on COM1 with your mic. So this makes it really handy if you do not want to leave frequency, but you need to listen to the ATIS of your arrival airport. Once you have that ATIS information, you go ahead and turn off the receiver for COM2 and just by tapping on that again. And now you will only be receiving on COM1 and you will be transmitting on COM1. So that is a really cool feature so you don't actually have to leave the frequency in which you're monitoring for approach or uh, center or whomever you're on uh, frequency with. So the very next and the last thing that you would want to do on this menu is enter your nav frequencies into the radio. To be able to do that, all you need to do is left click on the audio panel right down here and you will see your nav one and nav two radios. If the frequency set in your nav one standby is the frequency that you want to put into your active, all you got to do is click there and hit transfer and it will go ahead and put that into your active. But again, to be able to transfer, you have to click on it, hit transfer, and then it will do it. So you've got to go through a couple different menus to do so. All right, so the time that everybody has been waiting for for the G3000, the MFD menu. Yay, MFD. All right, so we're going to go through a couple, we're, we're going to go through all of the different features of the MFD portion of the screen, and that is starting with the map menu. So if you click on the map menu, a couple things are going to pop up. Your level of detail, again, you can add or subtract to that level of detail. Me, I like to keep it as least as possible, so I have as little amount of clutter on my screen. The other thing I like to do is make sure that my orientation is in north up. The next cool thing that this screen will also show you is traffic. If you hit the traffic button, it will show you all the traffic that is around you. That can be very beneficial because it is one on a bigger screen and it is kind of on the map so you can get a good idea of where they are um, around you in space. All right, so I like to keep my traffic off. The other cool thing that you're gonna notice on our screen right here is this inset menu. This is going to be our VNAV leg inset menu. This is very, very important when you're trying to follow a VNAV glide path profile. This is going to bring up all of our pertinent information for our to VNAV. To be able to turn this inset menu on, and it's not on factory, you need to go to inset window and tick on that flight plan inset window. Now, there's another feature here that you can go leg to leg or accumulative. Now, I've never used that feature, so we're going to leave it on leg to leg, and that's going to be it. Everything else I'd like to keep as default on this particular menu. The next feature on this menu is the traffic. 
So if you hit the traffic button, just like as it did over here, uh, this is going to bring up your traffic all around you. In any case, uh, once you're on the traffic menu, if you tap that button one more time, you can activate some other features within that traffic menu. I pretty much leave all those as default and I don't change any, but if you are inclined to do so, go right ahead. The next cool feature that the MFD screen offers is weather. So in the weather menu, you're going to notice this little radar beacon pop up on our screen. If you click on that again, it will take you into some settings. The first thing you need to do is turn the radar on and turn the display into weather. And then the other cool feature is it allows you to pick either horizontal or vertical modes. I love the vertical mode in a sense because I can tell if I'm going to be between some layers of clouds and it better helps me navigate uh, when I need to put in an altitude request to ATC. To zoom in or out, you go right on this lower rotating knob here. You can then zoom in or out uh, on this weather map. To go back, you can just hit the home button, hit that map button and it will bring you right back up to your maps. The other cool feature on here is the half button. If you tap on this half button, it will literally do that and split the screen in half and give you full accessibility to a second uh, menu here or a second map here on the display. So to be able to use that second map, you need to select that second map and right here in the pane window, you can see which one is selected. If you go ahead and tick that, it will then switch over to the new selected side and then you can zoom in or out on that side. What I like to do is to go ahead and set one side up in GPS and set the other side up for weather. So I can come down here, do the same thing. We're gonna turn the weather on, turn it into vertical mode. And now I have my weather set up in my second pane. Now, until I need it, I will go ahead and put back in full screen mode. And that puts us into the last part that everybody has been dying to know and learn is how to input a flight plan into the G3000. So right now we are going to do that. So to enter our flight plan, we will tick on our flight plan menu. We've got a couple options down the side here. We'll get into those in a second. But the very first thing you need to do is add your origin airport. Today we are at KMCO, so we're going to enter that, and when you do, you're going to have a couple options pop up on the screen. One of the things that you really want to look at here is the distance that these are from you. Now we can see both of these are the same distance, so it doesn't really matter which one we click on. Our destination airport is the same way as KJAX, Jacksonville. And it now go ahead and put that in for us. Notice it didn't ask us to pick which one we wanted because there weren't multiple listings. So now to add an en route waypoint from KMCO, meaning you have just taken off and now you wanna en route to your first waypoint. The first thing that you wanna do is left click on add waypoint. Our first waypoint that we're gonna go to is ORL. So when we type in ORL and hit enter, you're gonna notice this screen pop up here again. Notice the distance. Now we can see the first one is 3,900 miles away from us, and that is way too far away. So we know that's not the one we're looking for. This one that's six miles away is most likely the one we want. So we can go ahead and click on ORL, and it now populates that into our flight plan. Now, here's the next thing. If from ORL, you were jumping on to an airway, well, you wouldn't want to hit add and route waypoint. So if you were going to a, if you were going to do a direct waypoint from ORL to another waypoint, you would click add waypoint, enter your waypoint in here, and that would be a direct path to that waypoint. But if you were going to jump on a airway, then there's a different way that you need to enter an airway for the G3000 computer. So if you're gonna enter an airway from ORL, you would left click on ORL and that will populate up some more dialogues here in this box. You would then go ahead and hit load airway. When you do that, it will then bring up this cool little screen for you to add your airway. You can then click on airway and pick which airway that you needed to add. 
When you do click that airway, you can then select your exit waypoint along that airway route. So once you click that exit waypoint, then you would go ahead and when you click load airway, it will then load the airway in for you. As you notice, the airway is collapsed and it does not show you all the different waypoints along that airway, but we want to see them. So if you left click on collapse and expand airway, it will now show you all the different waypoints along that airway. Now, once you've exited that airway at T-Bird, if you're going to be flying a direct flight to the next waypoint, you would click add en route waypoint and add your direct waypoint. If you're going to be hopping on another airway from T-Bird, you would left click on T-Bird, hit load airway, and then enter the airway in which you wanted to enter. Next, you would enter your exit waypoint along that airway, hit load airway, and it will now enter that airway for you. Again, everything will be collapsed. If you want to open it up, go ahead and hit expand. And now you can see all the different waypoints along that airway. In today's flight, we are not going to be taking any airways, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those airways by left-clicking and hitting Remove Airway. Confirm that with the OK, and it is now gone. Again, I'm going to go back up top and remove the T-Bird airway from here, as we do not need any airways in our route today. So that was a little explanation on how to enter airways into the G3000. And if you have any questions on that, go ahead and post those down below. So the next thing that we need to do is enter our procedures. There's one of two ways you can do this. You can either hit the PROC button right here, or from your home screen, you can hit the procedure button. All you need to do is go to arrivals, and I can tell you that we are going to be on the QUBEN 1 arrival, and we are going to be coming in on runway 26. Make sure that you have the correct transition waypoint in here, which is Haney that we're going to be using today. And if you would like to take a preview of this on the screen, go down to preview, hit show on map, and bada bing, there is your entire arrival on your MFD. Now, before you do anything after this, go down and turn that off then hit load. That will load that arrival plan into your flight plan for you. And if you want to go ahead and check that out, you can now go to flight plan and scroll down and that has your entire arrival for you. The next thing that we need to do is enter the approach. So we're going to click on the procedure button here, click on approach, and our approach today is going to be the ILS 26. So we're going to click on ILS 26. There is no transition. And again, if you want to hit preview, it will show you a cool preview on the map. Make sure you tick that off before you hit the load button. And it is now loaded into our flight plan. Again, we can go back to our flight plan and scroll down. And now we can see the approach put in there. So now that we have our entire flight plan with the approach and arrival procedures, input. The next thing that we want to do is set up for our VNAV. So next we're going to get into our VNAV and how to program VNAV and how to turn it on. So the very first thing that you need to do to be able to even use VNAV is to enter all of our flight restriction levels. So you're going to notice next to all of our waypoints we have a blank right here that says FT. So this is going to be our flight restriction altitude levels that we're going to be inputting in for each of these waypoints. Now you're going to say, where am I going to get all that information from? I don't know where to look. So I'm going to give you a cool website that you can go to, and that is chartfox.org. You can pull up all of your charts, arrivals, departures, everything right here. So as you look, this is our arrival procedure at Haney. Looking at the arrival plate here uh, at Haney, you can see a couple things down here at the bottom. One thing is this 280 and a K and a line above it and a line below it. This is a speed restriction we're not going to be following because we're in a TBM and we cannot make that speed. The next thing you're going to notice is your flight level of 240 with a line under it. That means we need to be at or above flight level 240. And for the lay person, flight level 240 means 24,000 feet. 
As we come down on our flight path to Shiner, we now have a flight level of 190 and 16,000 feet. As you'll notice, there is a line above and below these two flight levels, and that means that we can be anywhere in between 190 and 160 flight levels. As we move down to Pogi again, we then step down to 14,000 to 12,000 feet, and then the QUBEN, we are down to 12,000 to 9,000 feet. Not above and not below. We have to stay between these two altitudes. Next thing you're going to notice at QUBEN is a new speed restriction at 250 knots. Again, we're not going to be following that because we're going to be well under that speed. The next flight restriction is at BETLE, and that is at or above 5,000 feet. Notice the line below 5,000. That means we can be at or above 5,000 feet coming into BETLE. The next on our flight plan is GUTNE, and we have to be at 4,000 feet. Not above, not below, right at it. And then we proceed on our approach. So what we need to do to activate our VNAV, or so that it works properly, is to add all of these flight restrictions in our flight computer. I want to show you a really cool and easy way to do that, so you don't have to go and enter each one individually, unless, unless, it is a specific flight level that you must meet at that certain point. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first thing I like to do is enter my max flight level, which is be my cruise flight level, and I will put that in at ORL at 24,000 feet. Next, Haney, we need to be coming in at 24,000 feet or above. We're not going to be any higher than 24,000 feet today. Next, the lowest altitude on that arrival plate was at GUTNE which was 4,000 feet. So we're going to enter 4,000 feet right there. Now, one of the cool things you're going to notice here is that it's going to populate a bunch of different altitudes in here. These are the altitudes that we will be at when we cross this waypoint. Now, the next thing you need to do is then go up the list here and verify and verify that each of those altitudes stay within these altitude restrictions on your arrival. So what we're going to do here is start at GUTNE and work our way backwards this time. And we're going to go BETLE. And at BETLE, we needed to be at or above 5,000 feet. We would be at 7,000 when we reach that. That meets the requirement. QUBEN, we need to be between 12,000 and 9,000 feet. We are uh, going to be at 10,501 when we pass QUBEN, so that meets the requirement. The POGE, POGE, uh, we need to be between 14,000 and 12,000 feet, and we are just above 12,000, so that meets that requirement. There is no altitude restriction for bass, so we will go up one more. The next one would be Shiner, and that's between flight level 190 and 160. So we are just above 16,000 feet, so we meet that flight restriction, and Haney is at 24,000 feet. So as you see, it made it very simple for us to input all these flight restrictions, and all I really needed to do was add two, the very top, the very bottom, and it kind of put everything else where it needs to be. Okay, so the next flight restrictions that we're going to need to enter here is our approach flight restrictions right here at T-I-K-R-Y, and that is at or above 2,000 feet. Then D-A-L-T-N is at 1,600 feet. And runway altitude is 29 feet, and we're going to go ahead and put that in. So that pretty much sets up all of our flight restrictions for our VNAV. The next thing we need to do is activate the VNAV so it actually works. So you click right here on the VNAV button and you tick enabled and it will now enable our VNAV functionality in the airplane. One of the things you're going to notice here is our first waypoint, that is the active waypoint at 24,000 feet is ORL. 
and that's where we wanted to be at our top of this or our top of climb is at 24,000 feet so now we can hit the back button a couple cool features that we have over here is you can also program in a standby flight plan which is quite nice so if you have an alternate that you're going to enter in this is where you would enter that information also you can have there are some flight plan options if you tick down there you can hit show on map and you can show your entire flight plan for the trip make sure you tick that off though when you're done viewing that so now that we have everything entered that we need to here all of our procedures are entered all of our VNAV information is now entered. And as you see on our inset menu here, our legs have now populated into the screen. This is why this is such a handy tool and it also shows the arrival procedure that we're gonna be flying in on. Now the very last thing that you wanna do to get set up so you're not fumbling for things in the air is we know that we're coming in on an ILS 26 approach. So we need to program in the ILS frequency into our nav radio. But keep in mind to get to that nav radio, you've got to click on the nav button, click on audios, enter here, punch it in, hit transfer, and to, to, to get that information into that radio. I'm going to show you a quick and simple solution to get those ILS frequencies programmed in quite quickly. So while you're already on your flight plan menu, all you need to do is scroll down to the arrival airport, which is KJAX, left click on that, and one of the things that are gonna pop up in this dialog menu is waypoint info. If you click on that waypoint info, it does just that and gives you all the information about that airport or waypoint that you have entered. If you click on the frequency button here, this will list all the different frequencies for that airport. And if you continue to scroll all the way down, it will also list your ILS frequencies. You can then left click on that and then either activate or put in standby in either your NAV1 or NAV2 radios. We're gonna go ahead and activate that in NAV1 and NAV2 radios just for the sake of doing so. Now the cool thing is, once you've done that, on your main screen, if for some reason you forget or something gets misplaced or goes awry, you can go right down here and click on Waypoint Info and click on Airport and that same information will be right there. So it's literally two clicks away and you've got that information into your nav computer versus going through all the different menus to do so and remember the frequency on top of that. The chart button here is if you have a Navigraph subscription, so I don't, I'm not even going to be talking about it. If you click on aircraft system, this gives you some lighting. Now this is great if you're going to be doing night flights and you don't want these lights up too bright, you can go ahead and turn those down. Very handy. The next thing is utilities, and if you click on utilities, there are a couple different settings here. So you can change your time format. Um, you can also change some of the units that is used in the G3000 suite. So I would suggest you go ahead and take care of these and set these to the appropriate units for your region. Once you do so, you can go ahead and hit back on the home button. Now that you are back here on the main screen, there is a one more button here, which is the speed bugs. And this speed bug button kind of correlates to the same speed bug button on the PFD menu. All right, everyone, so now that we have got the G3000 programmed, we are started up and ready to go. Let's make our way to the runway and take off. So the plan for today is we're gonna be taking off in a northerly direction, trying to attain 24,000 feet up into ORL. Once we get to ORL, then we will go over some of the VNAV features of the TBM 930 and show you how to use them. In the meantime, let's say we get that park and brake off, give us some throttle, and let's get out of here. We're not going to be using ATC today because that's more of a headache than it's worth, so we're just going to be doing everything manually today. And again, we went through everything uh, a little fast. I tried to be as slow as possible without being too boring. 
But if you have any questions about anything, go ahead and post those down below. This way I can help you better understand the G3000 suite in the TBM 930. As we make our way down the taxiway to our runway... Whoa, what the hell was that? So as we're making our way down the taxiway to the runway, we don't want to go too fast. We want to keep that speed anywhere uh, up to 30 knots or so. Looks like we are hitting a bunch of bumps in the uh, taxiway here. Almost popped a wheelie there a minute ago. So we're going to take this all the way down at the end and then line up for our takeoff. So before we're actually going to do our takeoff, uh, one of the things that we did not do yet is set our barrow. So you can either do it one of two ways, get the ATIS information and set the barrow, or if you're like me and you're using custom weather, we're just going to go ahead and hit the B button on the keyboard and that will set our barrow for us. As you can see down here in the GPS, it has our next waypoint in, which is why I don't really set up any DMEs down here for the GPS because it tells me right there. Now one of the next things we're going to do on our way to the runway is we're going to set our altitude. So we're going to set our altitude bug at 24,000 feet because that is our cruise altitude for today. We are also going to be setting how we get to 24,000 feet. So there's a couple different ways to set uh, your ascent to 24,000 feet. You can either set that using a vertical speed, which you tap on the VS knob, and then you can turn this up or down. And what that will do is set a predetermined vertical speed for your aircraft that you set up in the computer. Actually, I didn't set 24,000, I set 2,400. Okay, now that I got 24,000 in there. Now today, I'm gonna stop us here for a second. So today we are not going to be using vertical speed mode, and here's the reason. We have a very short distance to get to ORL, and then Haney is not far off of that. I want to get there at the very fastest possible way that I can, and the only way to get up to 24,000 feet, the fastest way, is to not set a predetermined vertical speed, but to set it via our VY speed. So if you go down to our speed bugs and you go down to VY, we see it says 124 knots. That is going to be our fastest rate of climb. So the other way to get to 24,000 would be our flight level chains. If you just hit that flight level change, you're going to notice another thing pop up here. The V speed went away and a actual speed pops up above our speed ticker tape here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this speed to 125 knots. I just rounded up to 125. You could set it at 124, but we're going to set this to what our VY speed is. Why, you say? Well, because we want to get there as fast as possible, and that speed gets us there as fast as possible without having to manipulate our vertical speed. So now what the plane is going to do at this point, it is going to try to ascend to 24,000 feet at 125 knots. So, however high it needs to pitch to keep us at 125 knots is what the plane will do. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense for everybody, and again, if you have any questions on that, please put them down below. Now we're going to make sure that we have our flight director on, and that we have our flight level change on as well. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and proceed down to the end of the taxiway here, so that we can enter our runway right here on the left. Alright, so right about this point, uh, when you're holding short of the runway, this is when you would get on the horn and holler up to tower and request your takeoff clearance. So we're going to turn on our landing lights now, turn on our nav lights. Nav lights should have been on before, uh, but we're going to get them on. And everything else is set. Turn on the oxygen. 
and we are good to go. Tower said we are clear to take off runway 36 left, so we're going to roll onto the runway, line us up, and get prepared for takeoff. So a couple things that I like to do before I take off, one of the things is I like to set my runway heading into my heading bug. So if you just tap on that, it will now set your runway heading. The purpose for this is if you do switch into autopilot when you take off, which you really shouldn't do, but if you do turn into autopilot, you really want to continue runway heading until you're past the runway. You don't want to take off and then cut right across the runway to across another runway or across the airport. You want to keep following runway heading until you've passed it and then turn on your course. And we're also going to turn our heading hold on. Now we are all set up for takeoff. The next, the actually the only other thing we need to do is to put down takeoff flaps. We already have our pedos on, so we are all set for takeoff right now. Again, if you want to know the entire checklist procedure, I will go ahead and post a link down below for my Google Drive, and that will, uh, from there, you can download the checklist for the TBM 930. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing in the air. We're going to go ahead and apply throttle. Once we have about 50% throttle and we are pretty much stable, we will go ahead and apply full throttle, lift those brakes, and make sure that our torque doesn't go above 100. Now we're just going to apply a little bit of rudder to compensate. Next thing you want to do is look down here on that ticker tape. Once you get to that rotate speed, you're going to go ahead and gently bring back on the yoke. Once you do, you are now airborne. Now that we have some positive rate, we can go ahead and put our gear up. And look at this guy. He is just hovering in midair. So like I said, all you need to do now if you wanted to turn your autopilot on is go ahead and hit the autopilot button. It will now keep us going at runway heading and it will now also bring us back to 126 knots by raising the front of the plane up. So now that we're over 500 feet, we're going to go ahead and bring up our flaps. And as you will see, we are going to start increasing our vertical speed even more now that our flaps are up. The plane is going to continue maintaining that 125 knot climb speed and now that we have passed the end of the runway we're going to go ahead and put us into navigation mode. Once we enter that navigation mode the GPS will then lock on to our nav course and you will see us turning to intercept our GPS course pre-programmed in on the ground. So now we're going to allow the GPS to keep taking us up here to 24,000 feet now at a rate of uh, 125 knots. And it looks like our V-speed is right around 2,600 feet per minute. Hey, look at the guy right up there. So if we come down here and look at our center screen here on the MFD display, you will see, again, we have populated our next waypoint that we're on our way to and the target altitude, which is 24,000 feet. Now, one of the cool things that I've showed on previous videos of, of the G3000, and we're going to zoom out here a little bit, is this little arc right here. 
So this little arc is to help you double check yourself to make sure you're going to be at a certain altitude by a certain point. So we have our altitude set at 24,000 feet and at the current ascent rate we will get to 24,000 feet at this particular point. So that is before Haney because Haney is a little bit past that if we zoom out even more. You'll see Haney is right up here and we will be at 24,000 feet right here. So we will be perfectly fine before Haney to be at our cruise altitude. So if you didn't know how to use that, now you do. To be able to control that arc, all you need to do is either turn up your V-speed or down your V-speed and this arc will either pull away or come closer depending on how fast you're going. If you have any more questions about that, go ahead and post those down below and I'll try to answer those for you. Now we have just passed ORL and on our way to Haney we have 27 miles to go until we hit Haney and that will be at 24,000 feet. In the meantime we will just keep ascending to our 24,000 feet. Once we pass 18,000 feet I will come back at you and show you some more with the GPS. In the meantime let's take in all the beautiful scenery that there is in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright, so now that we had passed 10,000 feet, we can go ahead and turn our landing lights off. Don't need them on anymore and we will now continue on our way up to 24,000. Once we hit about 18,000 feet, we're going to go ahead and press in on our barrow button here and that will turn our barometric pressure into standard mode. Now because we are using custom weather today, we are pretty much in standard mode now, which is 29er.9er2. So if we come down here to the center screen, we can notice that our torque is at 84%. Now if we up that to 100% and look at our vertical speed to the left, you're going to notice one thing. Our vertical speed did increase. So we can control the rate of climb based on throttle as well as speed. So you can kind of customize this any way you need to to get up to the altitude that you need to. So if we look right here, we can see this little arc right here. And we're going to do something kind of special right now. So we are going to disengage flight level change and we are going to turn vertical speed on. Now, the cool thing with vertical speed is I'm going to show you how we're going to use this arc to our advantage. And you saw it just went out of the picture here. So, we're going to continue to climb. And I'm raising my vertical speed here. Now, you see that arc has pulled down in the display. If I reduce my vertical speed, notice the arc pulls away. If I increase my vertical speed, which means we're going to get to 24,000 feet faster, that arc pulls closer to me. So that's a great way, again, to be able to navigate your altitudes and to figure out if you're going to be where you need to be. So I want to be at Haney at 24,000, and I want to be there just prior to Haney. So I'm going to set us at 1,800 feet per minute, as you can see, that little arc has now pulled before Haney. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit more. So we're going to set us at 2,000 feet per minute. That puts our arc right before Haney. So we will be at Haney at 24,000 feet. So that's another cool little way to adjust your ascent and descent rates depending on this arc. And it does work in descending, in descending as well. All right, so we are getting ready to pass 18,000 feet right now, which is when we would come and hit our barrow button right there, and that would reset our barrow for us. Now, if we want, we can come down here and turn off this traffic map by just tapping this, and that will make that map go away. If you want to zoom in or out again, uh, you can just do that right here on this side. Now, as you're ascending in the TBM 930, one of the things you're going to notice is that once you get near 20,000 feet, if you were using your Y speed rate, 
you're going to notice the pressure differential is going to throw you a error right here and it, I believe it's going to be a master caution and tell you that your air differential is off. So once you get up so high you then have to kind of reduce the amount of climb you're getting to keep the air differential uh, correct so that this way all of your passengers don't get blown out of your drums. <laughs> So um, just keep that in mind. If you do ascend too quickly, the air, aircraft cannot uh, equalize the pressure inside fast enough. So it looks like we might be coming in uh, to our arrival airport in the dark. But we are using a couple mods for that today. We are using the UWA mod for the lighting for the TBM. Links will be down in the description for that. As well as airport lights. Uh, they are also modded in this. So I will also put a link down below for that as well. Okay, so as we approach 24,000 feet... Right there you go. There's the cabin differential pressure, which is what I thought wouldn't happen. So we're just going to kick that master warning. And we still have to keep ascending at the rate we need to because we have to be at 24,000 by the time we reach Haney. So we're going to disregard that cabin pressure. And sorry, everybody back there. You now can't hear very well. <laughs> Okay, so a couple things that you're going to notice uh, that we are now passing Haney on our way to Shiner. You can see our top of descent will be here in 10 seconds. Our next waypoint that we have programmed in is at 4,000 feet, which is our lowest altitude level. Alright, so you're going to notice a couple things populate on the screen right now for our VNAV. Um, one of the things right now is you're going to have a glide path that's going to show up. This is similar to an ILS, and you have a magenta arrow right here. The object is to keep that magenta arrow right here centered, and as you can tell, we were a little late on our descent. So if we go ahead and look over here at our VNAV profile, you see our 4,000 feet, which is our last flight restriction on our path. It will give us the required vertical speed to get this uh, magenta line back up to where we need to. And it shows the vertical deviation and tells us how high above we are from our glide path. Now, I've got us coming down a little bit faster than we need to because I want to be directly centered with this glide path. Now here's the reason. Because in our flight plan, when we set everything up, we did not put individual uh, flight restrictions in for each of these waypoints. And as you remember, some of these waypoints were pretty close to the flight restriction level. So you want to come down at exactly as you're supposed to so that you do not bust any of those flight restriction levels. So now that we have got our magenta arrow back up near center, we can go ahead and put our vertical speed back on this magenta line. So you'll see this magenta mark right here is the vertical speed required. And if we go ahead and just place us there, that should get us where we need to be. Again, I now pushed us off a little bit. So I'm going to make up some altitude here. Alright, so now that we've got us pretty much leveled off with our glide path going down, the other thing that you want to do is pull out some throttle. Uh, keep around 60% or so, um, at least that's what I do. Then you can look over here on your V-speed target and you can see 
that right around 1100 feet per minute is where we want to be and we are at 1100 so that should get us down quite nicely on the next waypoint on the leg is at bass as you can see at shiner we're going to cross shiner at 16,100 feet and at bass we're going to cross that at 14,380 feet Shiner, the flight restriction level was 16,000, so we cannot be lower than 16,000 coming through there. And uh, we're just going to keep on this until we are all the way down to 4,000 feet. Now we're getting ready to pass through 18,000 feet again. We want to go ahead and turn our barrow off of standard mode, and now is when you would put us into your current uh, barometric. You'll put your current barometric pressure in right now. So that's pretty much all there is to the VNAV. Um, all you want to do is to keep this thing centered. And as you see, we're just a touch below that right now. And if we go over here, we can actually see that we are 69 feet below our glide path. But that's okay. We are pretty much right on the ball. And as we continue over our various waypoints, this will populate an update for you and show you your next altitude target restriction. We'll also give you some leg distances and times for that leg as well as remaining fuel. And again, if you do not want this on the screen, all you have to do is go down to flight plan, go to VNAV, and then you can look at all of that information here. Uh, it's a little bit less information, but you can get the gist of what you need to do. That's why I like this so much on the screen here, because it gives so much information uh, for your descent. Now, the only thing the VNAV does not do, it doesn't control any ascent. So if you want to have VNAV for an ascent, this will not do that for you. On our descent here into Jacksonville, once we get to our approach transition point, I will show you how to activate the approach mode in the TBM and how to set everything up to come in on your ILS landing. Now remember we had already pre-programmed in that ILS frequency down here in the waypoint menu in our nav. Once that nav frequency does populate, you're gonna see our nav needle then start moving in, in the little compass rows that we have right here. So again, if we go back over here, we can see we are a little bit high and our vertical speed required is a little bit less than we are. So we're going to go ahead and just set us to 900 feet per minute now descent. So if we come down here right on the, right on the pilot side panel here, if we look right over here it has your maneuvering speed and flaps extended speed 178 knots landing gear configuration 122 knots so at 178 knots we can put down our first notch of flaps so that's pretty cool and that will help us get down to the speeds we need to so that we can put down our gear at 122 knots in the meantime, we're just going to ride this descent down all the way into Jacksonville, Florida. Hope everybody is enjoying the video today, and I hope you are getting a lot of information out of this. If it is helping you on your quest to operate the TBM 930, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Let us know that you're enjoying all the information that you're getting from the video today. Hey, if you're enjoying the video today and you love that information, a sub to the channel would be spectacular. So now that we are getting ready to come down below 10,000 feet right now, I'm going to go back up top here and turn on my landing lights on the outside. That'll get us ready to land.
And this way I won't forget about them once we get a little bit closer. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of talking about our approach that we're going to be coming in on today. Uh, as you can see, our localizer frequency is 110.3, and that is exactly what was in the computer. Uh, you can see right here that we need to be coming in at or above 2,000 feet, and then at or above six, yeah, at or above 1,600 feet on our final approach fix. So this is going to be our inbound approach today into Jacksonville. Now, before we get on our approach, there's a couple things that need to happen. One, you're not going to arm this approach until you are lined up on the localizer. Because most of the time, you have to have a localizer lock before the glide slope will lock. So if you hit that approach button too early, sometimes you could have a problem with things locking together and then you're going to miss your approach. So I'm going to show you uh, just when to hit that approach and also we need to switch our FMS, our nav, our active nav to nav 1. So we're going to switch out of FMS and go into nav 1 and that is going to lock on the localizer beam. Once we have that locked then we will go ahead and arm the approach and get ready to lock on to the glide slope. In the meantime, let's take a look outside and enjoy the beautiful scenery again right here on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do is uh, we're going to come down below here and we're going to set up some speed bugs. So uh, we're going to go ahead and turn off all the speed bugs and we're going to turn on our approach speed bug now as we don't need rotate and we don't need VY anymore. So now that our approach speed bug is there, once we come in on the approach and you can see the AP is already populated on our ticker tape here for the speed. We are coming down just nicely at a nice and gradual 800 feet per minute now. We are a little bit below glide path and that is fine. Now if we look over here, we can see that we are going to be at 4,000 feet right at G-U-T-N-E. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease, actually I'm going to increase the descent just a little bit because I want to come in at Gutin or however you want to say it at 4,000 a little bit prior to the waypoint. Again now that we're getting into nighttime if you go to aircraft systems and lighting we can dim some of the lights in here. We can set the mood with some lighting. Wow. Now, because we have our altitude set at 4,000 feet, once we get down to 4,000 feet, we will automatically uh, stop right there. The next flight restriction altitude after 4,000 feet is our 2,000 foot initial approach fix, and we will put that in to our altitude reading here as soon as we get down to our 4,000 feet. Once we cross over, this right here will also show our 2,000 foot flight restriction at the top here. So we'll know that we have to do it once this populates up here. And it looks like we have about another minute to go until we are at bottom of descent or just about. Alright, as you can see, our 4,000 is flashing up there. That means we are getting close to our 4,000 foot altitude. Getting a little dark, and like I thought, we are going to have a gorgeous night flight tonight. So that right over there is Jacksonville International. That is where we're going to be landing.
So we're going to come down here to the GPS and zoom in a little bit so we can get a better view of what our plan is. Get our plan of attack going here, so to speak. Now the next cool thing that you're going to notice right down here on your Nav 1 and Nav 2 bearings are you're going to see the needles populate in display. Now a lot of people are unsure which needle is for what, and I'm going to show you right now. So if you look at the Nav 1, see how it's got a thin line on it, and Nav 2 has a thick line on it. Alright, so what I did for everybody was I turned off the Nav 2 radio right here, and now you can see how thin this line is. So that's how you can differentiate between your Nav 1 and Nav 2 lines. So if I were to go ahead and turn on the 110.30 again, you will see that now both of the lines are in play right now. So, and, and you can see they're both pointing at the same direction because they're both set up for the exact same frequency. And again, we can kind of cross-check ourselves with this little arc to make sure that we're going to get down there. To make sure we're going to get down there fast enough. And it looks like we are, so we're going to be down at 2,000 feet right around this point. We will activate our NAV-1 frequency once we hit a little bit past that point. And again, we don't want to do it right now because if you activate the NAV-1 radio and the localizer pops up, it may take you on a completely different course than you actually want. Okay, so if we're looking at our course right now, as you see, we are almost on an intercept course in uh, to the localizer beam, which is going to be straight out this way. So because we're just about on a 45 degree angle to, um, to lining up on our localizer, I'm going to go ahead and switch us into nav 1 mode right now. Now as you see, what's going to happen is the plane is now going to turn to try to intercept the localizer. That's why you don't want to do it way out here because it's going to turn wherever you are to try to intercept the localizer beam. Notice I did not hit approach yet because we are not ready to do so. We have not intercepted that localizer beam. So until we do so, I will not enter the approach button. We are now at 2,000 feet. So we are right on point for our initial approach fix here. Now once we turn and get lined up here on the localizer, which looks like our runway is right out there. And as you see, we are, as you see this green line is starting to come to center. That will tell us that we are just about lined up on the localizer itself. Our glide slope is way up here, so we are still way under the glide slope. And that's exactly the way I like to come into the glide slope. I like to intercept a glide slope from underneath because if you're above it, well, a lot of times you're going to miss it. So now that we are just about lined up on the localizer, now I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach mode. Now when I arm that approach mode, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to notice GS comes up here, but we are not locked on any glide slope as of yet. We can still control our descent and ascent with vertical speed if we need to, but as of right now, we're going to hold off and we're going to bring back some throttle at this point. Now we can't put down our landing gear yet because we have to wait until about 122 knots. To slow down, we're going to go ahead and add one stage of flaps right now.
Now, as we're on our path here, you can see the glide slope little beacon here is coming down. This little green diamond is working its way down to center here. Once it gets down to around the center, it should lock onto the glide slope at this point and start our descent down to the runway. All right, we are now on final descent. Now we have not put the gear down just yet because we need to be down near 122 knots. To get us there, we're gonna go ahead and put our flaps down, our full flaps down. You're gonna notice our airspeed is gonna drop significantly. We're gonna to need to add some throttle and we're gonna now add our landing gear. Approach speed is right around 84 knots, so we're going to try to get us there by the time we get to our landing point. Again, you want to keep it on the throttle to keep your airspeed up to where it needs to be. We are now on final approach. We're just about passing our final approach fix. Now, I probably didn't need to add the final stage of flaps until we get to about here, but because we weren't, because my speed was so far above 120, I went ahead and put those flaps down to get my speed down so that I could lower the gear. I don't think anything would have happened if I lowered the gear anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We're about a mile and a half out. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the autopilot at this point, and we are all manual. Now, one of the things you want to do is look down here on your PFD screen because you can kind of get lined up with the runway here where you need to be right at the end of the runway, and that will help you get in a little bit better. It looks like we're fighting a little bit of wind right now, so that doesn't help either. As you heard the minimum call. Flared a little bit too much on that, but it turned out to be a nice landing after all. Go ahead and throw our reversers on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it in the TBM 930. If you have any questions, please go ahead and post those down below. I am thankful for everybody joining us on our video today and wanting to learn more about the TBM 930. If you haven't done so already, go down below and hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash the thumbs up button. It really helps us out. And to all of our flight simmers out there, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one.